This is actually the second video in a three video series about fan installations in vans. If you're interested in part one, I'll link it in the description and I discuss the five mistakes and problems I had while installing my first fan four years ago on my first fan build, plus how you can avoid them. I also go over fan options, layout choices, materials, and the basics that we can get right into the installation today. I also already made the template in part one, but as a quick review, I traced the flange onto cardboard accounting for the space of the outer lip. And now I have taped that template where I want the fan and made sure it is straight and centered. The first hole, I, I get it, I feel nervous, but the first hole actually goes right through the middle, so there is no way I can mess this up. I mean, there definitely isn't no way I could mess this up. It would be pretty difficult though, as my only job is to get a hole through somewhere on the template so I can match this up and use it as a guide on the roof. So now I'm drilling a small hole through the center of my template so that I can check the position of where the fan will be from the roof and make sure I like where it's positioned from that perspective as well. Also, just a note, when using a drill bit on metal or steel, it is actually better to make the drill bit spin slowly to not burn the drill bit out. And there you have it. Once I'm on the roof, I will match up the holes on the template with the ones I screwed into the roof and see this is an ideal location. I will also aim to make the edges of the flange on a raised rib because this is where the screws will go into the roof later on and it will mean I can use less beetle tape and just have a better overall seal. I ended up having to retry positioning my fan for a while because I was not liking how close the flange or the cut is to the seam. However, after a lot of thought, I looked back at my last fan I installed four years ago and saw it was actually in the exact same location and it was just fine. I'm not cutting the seam, just putting a few screws through it, and with lap sealant to recreate a new seam, so I decided to just yeet it all in there. However, I mention this because I am not sure I can endorse you to do the same. Also note, it is never okay to cut off any of the support beams for your fan or any other thing you install on your roof for that matter. So once I had the position where I liked it, I made some estimate marks for location and applied some painter's tape on the roof. This will help prevent the jigsaw scratching my roof. Some people also put tape on the base of their jigsaw, which helps as well, but I didn't. Because I, I did it. I, I didn't. I don't know why. From there, I put the template down right on the hole I drilled and marked each of the edges, but decided to reuse the flange as the final template to trace. Double checking the screws will be on the ribs and using the middle rib as a guide to make sure the fan will be centered. Next, I went back into the van to hang up a trash bag for all of the metal shavings that are about to fall from the roof so that they don't end up all over my van. They actually give you a large bag in the Max Air Fan box. I had to tape mine up a little bit, but it worked well. But if you have any oversized trash bag, that works as well, or you can even just tape up the Max Air Fan box. Now back on the roof, I'm drilling a hole in the four corners of the template I just traced, starting small and going up to a drill bit that will create a hole large enough for my jigsaw blade to fit through. Once I finished this, I went back into the van to check the location of where those four holes ended up, since personally my positioning was really tight with those two ribs, and I'm so happy to say I got the positioning just right, just where I wanted it perfectly. Next, I'm putting a metal blade into my jigsaw, then dropping the blade into the hole I just created. Try to apply a good amount of pressure on the blade consistently and keep the cut consistent as well and steady so you are non-stop to avoid the blade jumping around. Also, I saw a tip that said keeping your cut consistent and not stopping will help you not break your blade. So ever, I still broke a blade this time around even though I was trying to do this. So if anyone has any advice for avoiding breaking blades while doing this, please comment below so we can try to save someone else's blades. Also, safety glasses are an absolute must while doing this, and if you happen to have, like, nose plugs, nose glasses... Up my nose. Ew. I need nose glasses. Once you've cut out the first three sides, I recommend taping up your fans so that the pieces not fall through and rip your bag, sending metal shards everywhere. And to help make this final cut a little easier because it's gonna help level out the piece while you're cutting. And once you finish this cut, you'll now have a fully cut out 14 by 14 square in your roof. At this point, you can take your flange and attempt to place it in. And while there is no front and back to the flange, there are sides. So make sure the silver pieces are on the sides just like this. If it does not fit on the first time, this is actually a good thing. This means you can just shave off a piece here or there in one or two places and you can have a super snug fit. I placed my flange back onto the roof and traced the small portions that were stopping it from fitting and took my jigsaw to that. I still had to cut off a few more small pieces before it finally fit, but it was such a perfect fit. I literally had to hit it in. It was, oh, I was so happy about it.
And now we can finally remove the painter's tape. Throughout the entire installation after this point, I also consistently start trying to clean up and get all of the metal pieces off of my roof. I'm trying to avoid them getting stuck somewhere and creating rust. I also quickly regretted installing my roof rack before doing the fan and the skylight and all those things because so many pieces of metal got stuck under the roof and are gonna be an absolute nightmare to get out. A magnet is a really good option for picking up the small pieces, but right after cutting the hole, there were so many large pieces, I actually just swept them right into the garbage bag that was hanging down under the hole. Honestly, I'm watching this back right now, and I have watched so many people sweep the metal like this in videos, but I'm like watching this being like, am I not scraping the roof with the metal pieces as I sweep it into the hole? And like, am I not getting metal shards all into the broom that I'm gonna use in my, like my van later on? Like, is this really smart? You know, maybe vacuums are the best way to go, but I don't have a vacuum, so. Now we have to file down the edges so nothing is sharp or sticking out or rough. You're supposed to do this with a metal file, but I could not bring myself to buy a tool that I would literally only use once and then would just sit around. So this is another one of those do what I say, not what I do situations. Again, I'm not a professional, but if you want to learn to build a van from a professional, I will link Van Life Academy, a step-by-step -step van building course by professional van builders in my description, which would take you right to my discount page. Anyway, I just smoothed out all of those edges as much as possible and then cleaned the area. Then I re-taped up the area, giving about an inch gap from the edge. And from there, my next step was to paint over the raw metal edges to avoid rust, and I used Rust-Oleum Clean Metal Primer and sprayed it on each side of the metal, both from above and below. I would have preferred to use the actual paint, but the paint is so expensive and comes in such big containers, and I only need a little bit, and this works just fine, so that's what we're doing this today. And oh my gosh, listen to me being cheap again. So while the spray paint dries, you must learn to clone yourself, okay? This step is very important. Without it, you're, you can't finish your fan. Then send your clone out to find the ring of power. It is not overselling it to say that the fate of the world lies on this journey. Your clone may be tempted with the power of the ring, undoubtedly. They may desire to succumb to its draw, but regardless, you must send them to Mordor with the ring and their life's one true purpose. And then you can get back to working on your fan. Trust me, bro, the spray paint physically cannot dry unless your clone is on its way to Mordor. Then, and only then, can you get back to working on the fan install. So now that all of the cutting and drilling is done, you can remove the garbage bag and discard appropriately, and feel free to remove the tape now as well. The next step is to apply butyl tape. Butyl tape is not only an adhesive and sealant, but also a protective barrier against moisture and condensation. The first layer you apply should be one basic layer around the outside edges of the fan. And this should be two strands of the butyl tape thick so that it can reach to the outside of the flange as well. You don't need to worry about this being perfect and pretty. No one will ever see it. You just need it to be effective and even out the area. Also, I made sure to put a small amount around the inside metal edge to create a great seal and tight fit for the fan. Once you get to the uneven sections, you just wanna keep stacking the butyl tape until it's even with the highest point the fan touches. If your butyl tape is too sticky to work with, you could actually put it in a freezer for 30 minutes to solve that problem. Also note, once the butyl tape touches the other butyl tape, it is immediately gonna create a strong bond that is really difficult to get apart again. So when you put it down, make sure you know where you want it first. And before everyone goes running to the comments to recommend those $80 adapters, I cannot understand them for the life of me. Just know they just seem like an absolute waste of money. I have never seen anyone have a problem with the butyl tape. It seems like they're finding a solution to a problem that doesn't exist, except saving you time. But the butyl tape, you already bought it. You already need it anyway, even if you use the adapter. So I just can't fathom spending $80 for this. I just haven't seen any evidence as to why they're worth the money. If you disagree and you have a valid opposing experience, I would love to hear it in the comments though. However, I have seen so many fans be installed with just the butyl tape, including my own and be fine in my very unprofessional opinion though. So I just think they're dumb, but that's again an opinion. Once the flange is replaced into the opening, you can take your drill and pre-drill each of these holes for the screws and then use the screws provided in the box with the fan to attach the flange. The bag has many screws in it, so be sure you're grabbing the right ones. The four small ones will be used later on and the ones with the flat heads will be used to attach the inside edging. I've also seen people put sealant on the screws before they screw them in, which could create a better water barrier if you want to do that. Also, real quick, I found this product, which I won't personally be using as I think it may be another overbuilding trap, but I wanted to share in case you were interested and I think they share good information for any install. That some people, they wanna put an aluminum strip on top of the vent flange 
to help distribute the load. To be honest, I don't think it's really necessary to do that. Um, we always tell people just don't screw the screws in too tight and what what happens sometimes if you do screw those in or over time that this plastic will crack right along the, where the screw hole is. So, and what a lot of people have done just with a, a little strip along each side um, is to help even out the pressure of the screws so that you don't crack the flange. We don't see that happening often, but you know, maybe this is good insurance. If you're one of those people who want to kind of do everything perfectly, which I totally get that, I'm kind of the same way, then this might be a good thing for you to do on your van. And as we move on to the next section of this install, you may note I am not using the common wooden frame people screw their fans into. These are to provide stability and give the screw something more to attach to. However, I am attaching my fan right in between two of the van's ribs. So the van already has lots of extra support here. Also, it wouldn't even fit here if I wanted to because of how close it is to those ribs. But this is also kind of similar to that $80 adapter where not everyone does it and people end up fine either way. At this point, <laughs> Welcome to living in a Walmart parking lot. Anyway, as I was saying, at this point, the wind randomly picks up like crazy again and my phone keeps falling over while I'm recording and the screws are frustrating me and I really feel like I have no option but to call it a night even though we are so close to being done. At first, this kind of worried me, even though the forecast didn't call for rain. I'd be asleep. Oh my. This is just a tiny bit of what to prepare yourself for if you plan on living in a van in a city and sleeping at big stores. Anyway. Sticking your head through the max air fan hole is like a requirement. Have you ever seen anyone not do it? It's like people can't resist it. The temptation. The allure. My head's small enough to fit. Hey. Not gonna lie, going to bed last night with a giant hole in my roof was a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> so the first step of the day is to remove the excess butyl tape. You can use any card from your wallet, but not your Blockbuster membership card. Do you understand me? That is too sacred. Just take the card and dig it into the excess butyl tape around the edges. Then I re-cleaned the area and now we're ready for the lap sealant. The lap sealant for the fan on my last camper van build ended up being super drippy when it leveled out and it was further than I would have liked and I really want this one to look as clean as possible. So I did a lot of research. One suggestion was to apply tape to stop the lap sealant from going too far. Then you can pull off the tape and anything that goes on top of the tape will easily be pulled off. I also saw someone suggesting applying it up and down instead of side to side, kind of like welders do. But I tried that when I first started applying this for this fan and it ended up making it more messy for me personally, and I just wasn't a fan of that method personally. Oh my gosh, I wasn't a fan. <laughs> what a good pun. Anyway, I decided to just yeet it on there, and honestly, it's not the perfect application I wanted, but I think it ended up pretty good. It didn't level out too far, and you know, it's self-leveling lap sealant. It's gonna run a bit. And with the lap sealant as well, I applied a small amount on top of each screw and made sure to go back and check it hit all sides of the screw as well. In this clip, you can kind of see how the lap sealant levels itself out over time, so don't worry about what it looks like when you apply it or it being perfect at first. Also, my last van was colored red and this white lap sealant looked so bad on it, but I saw someone use a clear sealant of some kind and if my vehicle wasn't white this time around, I would have looked into that just because the roof would have looked a lot cleaner in the end. Now you can remove the tape around the edges, however, you have a long time to wait for this to dry. It takes five minutes for it to skin over, four hours for it to be waterproof, 48 hours for it to be 80% cured, and 30 days for it to be 100% cured. But that is totally fine because remember when you sent your clone off with the ring of power? Well, it is likely they are probably almost to Mordor by now, so this is actually the reason it takes 30 days to fully cure, because it takes them so long to complete their mission, it is actually on them to make a cure. The trials and tribulations they are facing are unparalleled, and there is no second breakfast on this quest. You just have to hope that you are lucky and they don't just say fuck it and decide to keep the ring, otherwise your Max Air fan lap sealant is just screwed. That's just, you know, I don't make the rules. So personally, I let my fan sit for four hours before I went back up to work with it, so I wouldn't disturb the sealant. However, you actually could have installed the fan with an open lid and then apply the lap sealant and done this in a reverse order so you don't have to insert it around the mushy lap sealant. However, I have all the time in the world, so I preferred to just have the open space to apply the lap sealant without the fan lid getting in the way. Are you ready? 
Also, before you put the fan into the flange, you wanna pop up these little metal circles. Make sure that they're aligned with the circles on the plastic part of the flange. And as you place it in, make sure the wires aren't caught in the flange and will be free flowing underneath for later use. Also be sure that the overhanging lip of the fan is located in the back of the fan. Now you can take your final four screws and insert them into the sides and cover those with lap sealant as well. If you'd like, you can also cover the screws from the inside with lap sealant. At this point, you are technically done, but also technically not done. So now we have to be super vigilant to clean up all of the metal shavings around the roof to avoid rust. You'll also need to eventually cut and attach this plastic frame that came with the fan over your ceiling once that's installed. However, for me, I really want to try to go with this more wooden frame look this time around. I've also seen people be able to spray paint these black or other colors to make their van's aesthetic match. I also got this cover from the Wonderful Co. for the fan, which will help insulation, but also blackout light if I ever want it to be completely dark in the van. Also, another side note, some people, like in this video here, add a window trim seal to their fans to seal out more noise. Personally, I didn't really mind it in my last fan, but if you do, that could definitely be a worthwhile thing to add. These fans also have removable bug screens that get dirty pretty fast, so try to schedule to clean it out at least once a month. I constantly see vans where these fans are just so gross and covered in dirt. This is so bad for your health. The Max Air fan comes in different types with different speeds and some even come with controllers. Personally, I think they're kind of chunky and if I have to reach for a controller, I may as well reach for the off button since mine is located just above my bed. However, I did see this cool video about a person who figured out how to connect their fan into a universal remote and people have also connected them to Alexa's, which is pretty cool. These fans also have different speed settings and some exhaust and intake air, while mine only exhausts air. And this is just a reminder, these are not air conditioners. They will not cool your air, only cycle it. And finally, to round out this video, I want to talk about a few issues you may have with your fan over time and how to solve them. Some Max Air fans can squeak, which sometimes can be solved just by doing a deep cleaning if you've owned it for a while, or by rebalancing or resetting the blades, and people have even had luck getting rid of the squeak just by letting it run for hours on high until it stops. And there's also a common over voltage issue, which can happen due to oversensitive sensors, and adding a 12 volt voltage regulator between the power supply and the fan can solve this. There are plenty of videos that exist on how to fix all of these issues, but at least you know where to start if your fan goes berserk to look for a solution. In part three of this video series, I'll be fixing the issue with condensation dripping onto the circuit board. I decided to make it a third video though to make it more searchable and able to help more people. But there you go, we are now one step further into the van build. It's just so exciting. I'll see you in the next one.